Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6 as a whole. In summary? I like the season. <laughs> Edit that, I'll put that in that. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was a pretty good season overall. Didn't have any super stellar episodes, but it definitely was consistent. And it stayed that way. Didn't have any episodes that dropped where we're like, Oh my god, really? We had moments in the season where we're like, oh my god, really? But overall, to me, it felt very consistent, very solid throughout. Yeah, it was definitely solid. We had progression over the course of the season, because now looking at the season as a whole, you can see so much growth for Starlight Glimmer. I mean, from the very first episode to the very last episode, you know, she has several episodes focusing on her and also showing her peripherally. So her growth was really a focus of the season overall, even though it didn't entirely feel like that at the time. Yeah, that was the real thing. This season had a chance to actually progress a character. And as I mentioned in the season finale episode, I wish we had a chance to progress and grow another character. One particular changeling. Mm -hmm. Would have been nice. But we still did get moments of growth with other characters mm -hmm. and more story continuity because we had both the searching for the shop in Manhattan and the opening of the shop in Manhattan. Also more of Rainbow Dash at Wonderbolt Academy because we had both Newbie Dash and her Table Castle map episode with Twilight. So we got to go back to locations. So we went to Manhattan more than once. We went to Wonderbolt Academy more than once. We went to the Crystal Empire more than once. So we got to see progression in locations because we got to go to a location and then we got to go back to it. We got some off to the side uh, revisits of locations too, like Griffin, I almost said Gryffindor. <laughs> Like the Griffin's home area, which I can't remember the name of right now for some strange reason. <laughs> I want to say Griffinstone. Griffinstone, yeah. Uh, we got to revisit Griffinstone in a kind of a flashback with Gabby's episode. What a fun Griffin that is. She's a great new character. I really hope we see more of her. A little over the top for me on the energy level, but she's adorable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I mean about getting location updates. We got to see a lot of the CMC as well. Their episodes were a lot better than they have been in previous seasons. Now that they have the cutie marks, they kind of had this goal on helping others. And they're not just trying to discover randomly. They're like, just try out everything. Except for the Gabby episode, which was just kind of funny because she could do everything. <laughs> yeah. It's like, she's good at everything. How do you pick out one thing when you're good at everything? My goodness, the gal rolls a natural 20 on every attempt. <laughs> uh, that's a good way to transition to another fun episode. Uh, another Discord episode. I can't remember the name of it. but it Dungeons and Discords. Thank you. Dungeons and Discords. Ah, uh, It was a fun episode. Poor Spike and Big Mac, though. Isn't this what all gamers want? For it to be real? Too real! Too real! <laughs> yeah, we want just enough real that it can't... Uh, that it can give us the fear symptoms, but not enough real that I'm missing a leg. Wait a minute, that's not fake. <laughs> so yeah, we want the thrills without the kills. Mm-hmm. Because if we really wanted to go risk ourselves, we wouldn't be playing a game. We'd be doing something in the real world that was incredibly dangerous and exciting and thrilling, etc. But I like living. Mm -hmm. I like how that was a subtle reference to the holodex failing. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's John Delancey. He played Q. They have to throw a lot of Star Trek jokes in there. <laughs> this is why I hope if they ever get someone to voice... Star Swirl the Bearded, it, it has to be, je, uh, I almost said Jean-Luc Picard, but I mean Patrick Stewart. That would be awesome, because he, he is an incredibly talented actor, and then you have the extra cachet of, oh, he was on Star Trek. Mm-hmm. 
So let's see if it's a flashback or a time travel episode where Star World time travels to this period. Because there's a hint in the sister's diary that he actually meets Twilight Sparkle. Yes, and go back a ways through our reviews and I talk about an actual episode where he could have actually been there when Cadence and Twilight are at that little miniature event that is so much smaller than the Daring Do convention. <laughs> Which was another very good episode. I really liked that pony, except for the arguing they get into, which a lot of fans get into. I, I liked his attitude when he was like, oh, this is real. <laughs> yeah, when he finally realizes that. But I like how at the end they can agree that there's different aspects about the series that they're each a fan of. That that's the reason he likes the earlier books. And that's why Rainbow Dash also enjoys the later books. Because she had to enjoy the earlier books or she never would have gotten around to the later books. And yes, this even applies to the pony fandom. You know, regular MLP versus Equestria Girls MLP. Yes, I said the name. <laughs> I will make you watch those movies one of these days. If not... You'll at least watch the actual pony movie that's coming out next year, right? Well, yeah. And by the book that's coming out before the movie? You didn't mention the book before. Nope, I just found out about a couple of days ago. Okay, so that's a maybe because so far I've been disappointed with a fair number of the written materials. Yeah, it's because they're really targeting younger people with those. They're not doing the whole family thing. Except, or they're going too far the other direction where let's throw every fan reference we can into this. Or it's so written like fan fiction, like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a balance somewhere between there. So I might have to wait till it's actually out and we get some reviews. But other than the fact that the mo first movie was so painful, my, my main sticking point with Equestria Girls as a whole is... The Hasbro cash grab. Oh no, Monster High dolls are selling really well. Instead of coming up with a new line to compete with that, let's take something that's already popular, change it so that it's barely recognizable, make toys that barely resemble the characters that we put in the movie, and see if that works. <laughs> it worked uh, actually quite well. Just not at the audience they actually thought they might get. Teenage girls, not so much. 30-something boys? Again? <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> it's kind of like how they first released Card Capture Sakura over here. Chop off the first seven episodes. Let's introduce the boy because the boy is what everyone's going to care about. What logic is this? <laughs> uh, very bad logic. Who is even doing that? That sounds so for kids. I don't know who it was. I think it was Deke or D-I-C who Deke. also did Sailor Moon. Yeah. I can't remember who actually did Card Capture Sakura when it was first released over here. I just hope someone redubs it because the dub that's on the discs I have is tolerable. <laughs> yes, this is an advantage to liking subtitles. As long as the original was good, I'm okay. But we were talking about My Little Pony. Yeah, but there are several subgenres that it leads into. <laughs> yes, yes. And Why don't you lead us back into My Little Pony? Um, I can't because I'm enjoying the thought of the main six cosplaying in various card capture soccer outfits. Oh, Rarity would only cosplay as one person. Just one person. Because she'd be doing the outfits for everyone else. <laughs> so she'd be cosplaying as Sakura's friend, who for the life of me I can't remember the name of right now because I didn't pay attention to her name when I was rewatching the series recently. Because. <laughs> Recently, as in a couple of months ago, and there's a, a lot happened since then, so. <laughs> yeah, so to lead us back in, we get so much more exposure to other species this season. And in a positive way, because we had Gabby, and we had Dragon Lord Ember. Oh, she's awesome. Yes, yes I am. I was just about to say, you're also awesome, but okay. Pony, Dragon Lord, depends on which fandom I'm participating in. <laughs> uh, yes, lots of fandoms, lots of 
personas. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, yes, we had the dragons, we had the griffins, we had a wide variety of pony body types this oh, yeah, season, this even more so than in previous seasons. Yeah, I think this season was the largest variety of body types I've seen in the series yet. And the background ponies were also way more animated than they have been. So that makes it much more interesting and much less cookie cutter. I still remember early on videos pointing out where like the same unicorn was in three places at the same time. Or the same pair of unicorns was just copy and pasted and you're like, there's 15 Lyra bonbons. <laughs> what the heck happened, man? I love how one fan comic actually said it was time travel and they were all the same bonbon, but they kept time traveling to the wrong spot. <laughs> as good an explanation as any. Uh, well, technically, since we have Doctor Who in that universe. It is entirely possible. Also enjoyed that we got to see more Derpy and that we had a male delivered letter. Yeah, she was actually a delivery pony, like the fandom has always apparently imagined her to be. I'm not quite sure why. I guess it's because it's funnier. I think specifically, now that I think about it, I think it's specifically because that episode where Twilight was trying to figure out Pinkie Pie's uh, Twitch and everything fell on her when she was in the wheelchair and Derpy went like this up in the sky. Um, radio. She shrugged. I wasn't doing it for the audience. I was doing it for you. <laughs> uh so yeah, she shrugs and goes, I don't know. And the guy was like, no. <laughs> so I think that's what stirred the whole male pony thing for. Yes. But nice to see it as a confirmation. And nice to see more adult ponies with jobs. I also like, even though it may or may not be canon, the 100th episode was just pure gold for me. I know I complain about the fan pandering in all the other forms of media, but this was like the title of the episode it was a slice of life because it was outside of the main six and we saw ponyville from the outside and interacting with people it felt less like fan pandering to me and more like we're taking the focus off the main six for a little bit let's just see what actually happens in ponyville on an everyday basis which is a very interesting angle because while they're doing all this battling and everything else everyone else still needs to get on with their regular everyday lives and i really love the uh, little line of like We'll probably wrap this up in like 23 minutes or so and have some type of friendship lesson. <laughs> yeah, nice little dig there. Uh, so any particular favorite points for you? Uh, well, I wasn't quite done with character revisiting because we saw Flim and Flam again. Finally presented in a slightly positive light because they put their tricksterness to good use. Mm -hmm. Taking out an even worse trickster. Mm -hmm. And then taking his place. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't expect Reformation in a single episode, especially not for repeat offenders. Mm-hmm. Who, who've pretty much been repeat offending for their entire life. Like yeah. Like a certain pony who got an entire season to reform. Mm-hmm. So, definitely like the crystalline, you know, those awkward moments were very awkward, but it was a nice start to the build-up of the season, and obviously the episode with choosing the new Dragon Lord. I like how Spike gave it up right to her because like, you're a better leader. Yeah, it's like, all I wanted to do was protect my friends. But you're my friend and I know you will do that. He just wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. So of course that wonderful revenge against that jerk. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. <laughs> yes, incredibly awesome. And of course the episode with Gabby. She's such a doll. Mm-hmm. And of course, for me, the low point was Newbie Dash. Yeah, I only really had problems with the episode because of just the way it was. It just felt awkwardly written to me. To me, it wasn't awkwardly written. It was more that it was against most of the show's tenets, against friendship and, you know, respect and basically every friendship lesson. I'm not going to ramble on about it here because I did it plenty in our actual episode review. Well, I have seen some other reviews from people who are actually in the military and say that's very like the military. I know military has to be tough. It's tough training. You know, when you go out to fight or defend 
no one's going to take it easy on you. So better to have that come from your friends and comrades so that you can get used to it. It's still very painful to put into a children's show. And moving on. And a lot more world building with flashback episodes. I mean, we have flashbacks with Gabby, the flashback in uh, Where the Apple Lies. We got a lot of stuff out of that one. Another episode I really liked, though I wish it was a two-parter, was the Christmas episode. That would have been nice to have as a two-parter. Because a story like that needs more time to do the build-up and storytelling of the character and how they got there. To really make you feel for the character and cheer for them as they get reformed. Yeah, so on the plus side, she got all season. I just wish that episode was two parts because I really like The Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how many times it gets redone, it's usually awesome. Yeah, two of my favorites. Scrooge with Bill Murray and a version that was done for TV with Patrick Stewart. The Patrick Stewart one is awesome. I actually heard he did a one-man version of A Christmas Carol. Yeah. I was like, I, I would love to see that. <laughs> no kidding. How do you even do a one-man version of that? Amazingly well, if you're Patrick Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but back into the pony universe we go. <laughs> it's strange walking on four legs. <laughs> also, grass smells tasty. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I, I just have a little trouble eating something that I've stepped on. Yeah, yeah, that's why I invented these hoof washers. <laughs> being a unicorn gives you all options. Yeah, well, being an earth pony just means I can kick you into next week. Th that, that would be handy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to get to next week as quick as possible. You said you could do this. I'm counting on you. <laughs> I didn't realize he'd actually take me up on the offer. But hey, a chance to kick him in the head. Perfect. <laughs> but a week later, did I make it? <laughs> yep, it's a week later. <laughs> Why am I in the hospital? Let's just say it didn't quite work out how you imagined that kicking you in the next week would work. <laughs> Also, you may have or may not have had a concussion, brain damage. Your horn's okay, though. They fixed that. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting moment in Where the Apple Lies. <laughs> Good transition. Oh, hospital. That was an episode that had flashbacks that were in a hospital. I, I meant to do this as a transition. It looks around awkwardly. <laughs> but yeah, that was a... It was an interesting episode. It was, like I said this before, it was hard for me to watch. Is this the liar caught is always an episode that bugs me. Because I'm always like, they're going to get caught now. Oh, okay. They're going to get caught now. Oh, okay. They're going to get caught now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. And it's just hard to see it as being Applejack. And then with that being her past and her experience in lying and the damage it can do, how did Discord manage to trick her in the maze? And how did she manage to go along with Flim and Flam and their, you know, hokey potion? With that kind of young adulthood experience, you know, if things went that badly for me, I probably wouldn't even tell white lies. <laughs> and, and there's also the thing that I didn't really notice, maybe because of all the pausing I did, where we didn't see Apple Bloom anywhere. And apparently one of the writers said that the parents were on vacation, and when they came back from the vacation is when Apple Bloom was born. Though I'm seeing some age discrepancies. Well, we don't know how much ponies age, at what rate. Time is still a little bit wonky in the pony universe. You know, the whole moons thing. Yeah, I was going to say moons, moons. Do you know how long a moon is? Are we talking about a month? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about... A different type of lunar cycle? Are you talking about the lunar calendar? Are you talking about what 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 measurement is this? Give us an idea. We need a form of measurement that can be vague. How about moons? That will work. Because it works better than suns because you have sun every day. A sun sounds like a day, but a moon. One lunar cycle, two lunar cycles, does it mean blue moon, hunter's moon? Harvest moon? 
you know, especially since it seems to be most widely used by the Apple family when they say it. The only time I've heard it before said by someone else was in the, the first Equestria Girls movie. Uh, also by the Yaks from Yak Yak Stan. Hmm. Was it this season? No. That was last season. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just wondering what happens when we run out of moons of friendship with the Yaks. Because they specifically say for X number of moons. I don't know. This season was very solid, like I stated before. It's just... Do people feel that the writing has kind of gone down? I don't think it has. I think those people who think the writing has gone down are starting to read more into any slight fan service slash pandering that's in the episodes and they're thinking they're going too far. I didn't see a lot of that in this season. I saw a lot of references to outside works. I saw a lot of references to itself. Good references like continuity. And I think... The reason we were getting more solid writing and actually got an arc for Starlight Glimmer is because season seven is also guaranteed along with that movie. So the writers have more opportunity to write a more expansive storyline because they know they have time to actually complete arcs. Also, maybe they're doing something different with how the episodes are written. Because we're not seeing as much of that thing where, oh, wait, the character already dealt with this issue. That episode and this episode must have been written at about the same time, and it's all due to episode order. Characters are retaining their lessons. The best Fluttershy. <laughs> I was going to say, and the best indicator of that is Fluttershy. <laughs> she showed the most growth this season out of all the characters. Yes, taking down her deadbeat brother. Oh my god. God, I wanted to strangle him. I still want to strangle him. If I ever met him, I'd toss him over a bridge. What? He has wings. Who says I wouldn't tie them first? <laughs> you know, unicorn magic? I could just go bungee jump! Oh wait, I forgot something! You know Fluttershy would turn around and rescue him. He's still family. Who says I would let her know? <laughs> I wouldn't permanently hurt him. Just get a living daylight time because guess what? Also unicorn magic. Stop him before he hits the ground. <laughs> yes, I could be very mean, but he was a very, very stupid individual. Also, I can't believe he did that to his parents. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the other, I can't believe the adults are being such idiots. Applewood Derby. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty nice episode, but yeah, I know what you mean. Well, it was a nice episode. It's just, they're not listening. I had a feeling we are going to, like I said, in the episode review itself, I had a feeling that they, we were going to get a switcheroo of what we were going to expect out of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So I had a feeling we are going to like get flip-flops. That or they'll we get what we expect out of them. But we got the flip-flop, which is good, because I was hoping. Because that makes the story more interesting. It also gives more depth to the characters. Yes, and it didn't feel like it was a switch just for the sake of switching. Mm-hmm. So any more episodes you want to go over, or should we start wrapping things up, or should we just start talking randomly for no apparent reason? We do that all the time. I don't think we need to add it on to a recording that's probably going to be very long because it's summarizing an entire season of a wonderful show. That it is. We have other shows we need to get to reviewing. I'm looking at you. Hint. Not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that other show that we need to finish watching? Oh my god, and it's such a good season, too. Yeah, I can think of four things off the top of my head that we need to finish. And finish in time before the next one that we want to talk about has its next season. <laughs> yes, we're giving hints. I'm also going to try to get Ember to actually watch all of Gravity Falls. Oh sure, just came out and say a name. <laughs> oh, that one we haven't actually recorded yet. We actually needed to finish watching another show. Well, two shows I can think of. One is about magic, and the other is about magic. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm teasing living heck out of them, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, you really think anyone's still listening? Crickets. Pro probably Sasami Chan and... Uh, ben of the Gourmet? Yeah, him. Or them. Whatever gender they happen to be. Uh, yeah, I think we should... Summarize our thoughts on the season as a whole and wrap things up. What do you think? Mm hmm. That was enough random talk. <laughs> yes. Uh, very solid episode. 
not too many super high points, but on the flip side, not that many low points. Oh my god, I, I can't stand this episode. Which makes for a nice balance. It means things are getting more consistent overall, or at least more consistent with my personal tastes. Like I said, I think the writers, because they knew they were guaranteed another season and a movie, they could write solid stuff and not have to worry about is anything just going to be dropped off because our season's, you know, gone? So yeah, I think it was very consistent this season. Very nice. There were no really low points. There were some problems with certain episodes and it's more of a personal problem with them but the writing for those episodes were still good the episode itself could still be enjoyed just like my low point would technically be um where the apple lies because i was like it took me an hour <laughs> two hours two hours to watch this oh my god it's only 23 minutes long ah <sighs> overall i really like the season i can't wait for season seven and the movie I can't. We're backlogged. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6. All of it. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.